Hey there, this is Beth. How are you doing? We're going to be talking about a little bit about ancestors in this video. And also there is a live webinar call coming up October 31st where we're going to take a journey to the Hall of the Ancestors. So link to get in on that is down below and that's the one that says get updates and info, etc. Uh, sign up and get on that email newsletter and you will be updated on this and other things. So let's talk a little bit about ancestors here. One, first off, let's start with the most important thing when dealing with ancestors. These are not like guides who have necessarily your best intention involved. Ancestors can have some agendas sometimes, and that's where you want to work. watch out for when you're going to start working with an ancestral look on person with some ancestors, one-on-one. -on -one. And this is not, there's a difference between working with ancestors one-on-one -on -one and deciding to honor ancestors in some way. And we'll talk about the whole honoring part another time. But when you first start working with ancestors, especially in a one-on-one -on -one kind of way, you want to make sure you're getting the best one for you. It's like we know if a guide's telling us really mean negative things, it's not a guide. And you just want to get rid of that per person thing you're working with. Ancestors have been real people. They've been incarnated into Barney, in Bardies, into bodies, and that means they were human beings at one point. And in most human beings, have some form of agenda. Just because you have an agenda doesn't mean it's good or bad or in between. You know, it can be anything. But when they're gonna go use the agenda as opposed to working in your best interest or helping you understand intuitively and through journey work and through ancestor work, understanding your own ancestry, whether that be blood, ancestry, heritage, or lineage. You don't have to necessarily just work with blood kin or even heritage. You can work with different lineages that you are tied into. Each of those have their own ancestral heritage. So you can you can see there's a lot of potential here for working with some interesting characters and learning a lot of interesting lore. But you do want to work with the ones that have your best interest in mind. Very important when it comes to working with ancestors. And also the second thing I really, you don't have to work with the blood kin only. You can work because I, I work, my two main ancestral things I work with currently, one is heritage and one is lineage. Those are my two main things I work with. And I haven't really worked with direct blood kin directly. I have done things like set up altars, things like that for them. But for the most part, I've been working with heritage and lineage when it comes down to it. And lineage has proven to be a very interesting relationship of working with that group of ancestors who very much is much more less agenda-y because they're tied into the lineage. And that can really change things depending on what lineage you're following. You know, a good, strong, healthy lineage in the real world that started healthy and strong in the real world is going to have a much healthier and stronger lineage ancestral to work with than one that's had issues of, you know, using power over people, harassment issues, assault issues, that kind of stuff. If you have a lineage that's based in that, you're going to want to be really picky about who you work with in that lineage. The stronger the real world base that started that lineage, 
the more healthy that was, the more healthy the ancestral lineage is going to be. And to a certain extent, you can say the same thing of a family lineage. The more healthy and strong, strong in a good, strong way, a family lineage is, a family and blood ancestral kin. Same is going to happen with that, but we don't always have the luxury of having wonderful familial relationships for all of us. Some of us have better, and certain spots are going to be better than other spots, too, within your own brain cramp today of your own blood kin. So those are a couple of ways to get you started. Look at who you want to work with, who wants to work with you, who do you want to work with, and ask the questions of, the main question is, do you have my best interest involved? Or are you trying to promote your agenda through me? And see where that takes you. Um, it can be a very powerful way to bring in some healing. You can also start working on healing ancestral wounds and things like that. So, yeah, it's just a little way to get started. And it's really, lineage is one of the main ways I've started working. Mostly in the last couple of years, it's, it's been heavily lineage more than blood kin and a little bit of heritage thrown in there too. But, yeah, see where it takes you. Play around with this. You know, the more you're able to connect with something that's a lineage or your heritage or your blood can, you're going to bring in knowing and knowledge that you may not necessarily have thought about with those connections. And that's a really cool place to be. Alrighty, everyone have a wonderful day, and I will see you later. Go out there and be the love in the world.